Following the road east of the NCR Correctional Facility, we come upon a large, fenced-off area. Signs on the outside say, Danger, keep out, and as we get near, we realize we've found a place called Hidden Valley. Despite all of the protection, the front gate is unlocked. We can just open it on up and lock on through. Now the place looks nearly devoid of all life, save a few scorpions here or there. The land is really lumpy in places. I was climbing a nearby lump only to discover that it was really a bunker. The outside to this bunker has been covered in all sorts of graffiti. Peace, make love not war, Steve was here. Heading inside, we don't see a whole lot. It's a big vaulted space with garbage on the ground and some stacked up containers. The only signs of life we see here are a sleeping mat on the ground, a lit fire in a nearby tire, a sack, and a journal lying on a nearby shipping container. The author writes that this bunker is a great place for a safe house. It's warm, it's dry, and he talks about some sort of crazy natural phenomenon at night that keeps predators away. He's planning on setting up camp, but he wants to check out a few points of interest first to gather some intel. Hmm, gathering intel. Sounds like he may be a soldier of some sort. There is a sliding door in the back of this room, but unlocking it, we just find that the room has collapsed. It's completely filled with rubble. Back outside, we can explore some more, only to discover a second bunker. Inside, we see a similar situation. There's a big pile of rubble in the middle of this room, and here we find a few skeletons with a nearby suitcase. In the back of the room, we find another sliding door, but unlocking this one, again, leads to a room completely filled with rubble. Back outside, as we explore the valley some more, we find a third bunker. This one is different. It's got a big broken stump on top of it. It's the westernmost bunker in this valley before we get to the other side of the fence. Inside, we go down to enter another big empty room. Only this time, the locked door at the end is a very hard locked door. And it's red. We can activate the nearby intercom, but we don't hear anything. We need 100 lock picking or more to pick this. Thankfully, I've got some lock picking magazines in my inventory. Picking this lock, the door slides away to reveal a different room. No more rubble. The door to this room is different. It's glowing. And we see barricades outside, as if soldiers at times guard this door. Heading inside, we find a stairway going down. But at the bottom, we are intercepted. How the hell did you get in here? Normally, I would have already shot you. But I'm under orders to bring you to the Elder. Will you come peacefully? Oh, hey there, buddy. I'm just lost. I'm gonna go ahead and... Head on out. Not on my watch, you won't. You either go with me to the Elder, or I put you in the ground right here. Choose. Ah, uh, well, uh, thanks for the choice. I think I'll choose to live. Yeah, I'll speak to your Elder. Okay. I'll take you to him. Follow me. Closely. Or you'll be shot. Or I'll be shot. Great, thanks, Ramos. The screen goes dark, and we appear in the Elder's office. If you have something to say, say it to Elder McNamara. All right, so we go up the steps to talk to Elder McNamara. How did you find us, stranger? And do tell the truth. I was just exploring the area. I happened to see one of your patrols. You took an extreme risk in coming here. My policy towards trespassers has not been lenient. The security of this bunker is my foremost concern, and I take pains to minimize our exposure topside. For this reason, I might be interested in contracting with an outsider who can accomplish certain tasks, some basic, some a bit more involved. An NCR ranger has begun to set up post in one of the other bunkers up top, for example. I want him driven off. Understood? Uh, you want me to kill an NCR ranger? Why haven't you killed him yourself? Yes, we could kill him easily enough. But sometimes you can learn a great deal by observing people, both enemies and friends. Which is why it will be very interesting to observe how you choose to deal with the situation and decide which you are, enemy or friend. Do we understand one another? Oh, okay. I can respect that. But look, I don't do murder for hire. I never said the ranger had to be killed. And I wasn't giving you the option. I merely asked if you understood. Paladin Ramos will escort you back to the bunker's entrance and set you loose. Notice that I said, loose. Not free. 
You are not free to carry the secret of this bunker's location beyond Hidden Valley, until I'm convinced that you're capable and dependable. To underscore this point, you'll be fitted with an explosive collar. Wander off and it will detonate. Focus on your mission and you'll be fine. The screen goes dark again and we find ourselves back outside the door. You'll find your equipment in the chest to your right. Don't bother coming back until you've dealt with the ranger. We've been stripped of our equipment. We can find it all in the nearby trunk. Re-equipping ourselves, we discover that we now have an explosive shock collar on our necks. Oh no, this is the last thing I need. I was in the middle of doing another quest and I've got people depending upon me and I need to go back to the Lucky 38 and pick my fingernails and take a bath and so I'm just gonna run out this gate and keep on walking. As we get further and further away from Hidden Valley, our shock collar begins to beep. So, reloading an old save. Looks like we're stuck here. But, I do recall finding that journal in the first bunker. Perhaps that was the journal of the NCR Ranger Elder McNamara was talking about. Heading back to the first bunker, we see that it's changed a little bit. We now find a ham radio sitting on the small shipping container, some pots and pans, whiskey, and food. The author of the journal has also completed more notes. Looks like this ranger is really moving in. He got some supplies to last a while and he swept up the place. And we also learn about his mission. Sounds like he's not here for the Brotherhood of Steel. He's here to inspect the nearby NCR Correctional Facility, the prison where the Powder Gangers rebelled. He also makes a point to get back to the bunker early each night because he doesn't want to get blinded by the sand. The sand may be part of the natural phenomenon he was talking about earlier. He's having a problem with the radio. He can't seem to get it to work, but he doesn't want to move his safe house. It's such a convenient place for him to use as a base of operations. All right, well, we need to get rid of this guy. Let's see what options we have. Taking a look at the radio, we have two options. We can smash the radio or rig the radio to explode when used. Smashing the radio completes the quest and we can head on back to Elder McNamara. How did you resolve the situation with the ranger? We can then tell him how we went about getting the ranger to leave. In this case, we destroyed his radio. I see. And he's not particularly likely to come back since he's learned that the bunkers here aren't secure enough to serve as safe houses. It's not a foolproof solution, but indirect methods rarely are. What matters is that you drove him off without alerting him to our presence. Since you completed your assigned task, I will allow you to come and go from the bunker freely. So let's get that collar off you. There, that's better, I hope. Now that we have that bit of unpleasantness out of the way, there is a matter that I would like to discuss with you. Stop by the command room when you can. Oh, and bear in mind... If you end up betraying us, we will know it, and there will be no mercy. We can then go to the Elder's command room to talk with him further. But let's find out what happens if we choose some of the other options. We can choose the option to rig the radio to explode, but this doesn't complete the quest, and that's because we have to wait for the ranger to come back and try to use the radio. And you know, that's another thing. We haven't actually seen this ranger yet. We learn from his journal that he's out scouting the nearby NCR correctional facility during the day, which means that he's not going to come by until the evening. So, going over to a ship container we can crouch behind and wait until evening. Sure enough, he shows up. Thought you'd sneak up on me, you filthy powder ganger? We have three ways to respond. The bottom two have the exact same result. He says that he was only joking, but we'll pass the speech check to act like a tough guy. Ha! <laughs> Got some claws on you, little lady. I like that. What can I do for you? We can then try and figure out who he is and what he's doing here. Dobson's my name. I'm an NCR ranger operating out of Camp McCarran, north of here. Reading man by birth, though. Well, I thought I might set up a safe house in one of the bunkers here. Between the remote location and the dust storms, I figured it was ideal. Of course, seems a lot less remote since you showed up. Plus, I haven't been able to get my radio working, and a safe house is no good without one. I reckon I'll stick around a while, patrol for troublemakers, see if I can get that radio working. Hmm, so no one knows you're here, Dobson? Standard practice. Rangers operate on our own most of the time, and that's how we like it. Usually we call in our positions to McCarran to be relayed to other rangers, but I can handle myself. I'm sure as hell not going to lose any sleep on account of a goddamn broken down radio, but it will shorten my stay if I can't fix it. What are the powder gangers? Criminal scum that have infested this region. 
attacking caravans and regular folk just passing through. The dangerous ones are roamers, though there's another group that mostly stays put over at the prison southwest of here. So far, the brass haven't mustered up enough men to take the prison back. Long overdue, if you ask me. But I'm just one man. We can then go through a couple of different speech options to try and get rid of him. We can tell him that we think that this is a bad location for a safe house. Oh, and in your expert opinion, why would that be? And then we can lie to convince him that the powder gangers come in and out of these bunkers all the time. You've seen that with your own two eyes? God damn. I knew Cook's gang passed through these parts about that frequently, but I didn't know they hold up here. Be a rude awakening to find 15 of those merciless bastards looking down at me snoozing on my bedroll. Yep, I'd be better off setting up an ambush along one of their routes to catch stragglers. Thanks for the information. You may have saved my life. With that, he leaves, and we complete the quest peacefully. We can then go back to Elder McNamara, and he has different dialogue. Yes, you exploited his fear of powder gangers very effectively. The collar includes a microphone, you see. Part of the test. He'll keep his distance, setting ambushes, never suspecting that these bunkers house something far more dangerous to him than criminals. Well played. But let's see what other options there are. We can tell him that he needs to leave because the Brotherhood of Steel is here. A Brotherhood base? Here? Are you shitting me? No one's seen them for years. I don't suppose you've got a scrap of evidence to support this wild-eyed claim of yours. As evidence, we can point to the explosive color around our neck. I'll be. Let me take a look at that. All this is, is a slave collar. Seen plenty of these infernal contraptions in my day, and I know just how to spring them. Hold still. There. It's off. Now, thing is, a slave collar seems a little too basic for the Brotherhood. That's not to say I don't believe you, but... Did you just hear something? He takes the collar off of our neck, but we fail the quest that Elder McNamara gave us, and we are immediately attacked by Brotherhood of Steel Paladins. I'm with you! Well, I don't really want to eradicate the entire Brotherhood of Steel. What other options do we have? Now, if you kill him by rigging the ham radio to explode or just by taking out your weapon and murdering him, you still pass the quest. If you go back to the Elder, he has unique dialogue. But killing him makes the Elder worried. How do you know he won't be missed? That other rangers won't come looking for him? Or NCR patrols? Did you just make matters worse? We can either say, I'm not sure. That's right, because you did nothing to find out. Your collar was rigged with a microphone, you see. Part of the test. It would seem you are a brute. But even a brute can be of use. Particularly one capable of taking down an NCR ranger one-on-one. -on -one. In which case we're still allowed forward, or we can pass the speech check to say that it was a calculated risk. So, you weighed the value of confirming if his location was known against your advantage of surprise. All right. The outcome is the same regardless. Now, there's another way to access the Brotherhood of Steel bunker here. Instead of going through this drama with the explosive collar in the nearby Ranger Dobson, if you have Veronica in your party, you can bypass the whole thing. Going down into the bunker, Veronica takes over. I'd like a large atomic shake and a double Brahmin burger. And easy on the agave sauce this time. We gave you a password, Veronica. It's for your safety. I know where you live, Ramos. Open up. <sighs> for Pete's sake, opening up. Welcome back, Veronica. Both she and you are allowed into the facility. At the bottom, we are still greeted by Paladin Ramos. Listen up. I'm in charge of security around here. And I can't say I'm too happy about having an outsider waltzing around. But since you came in with Veronica... I'm inclined to cut you a little slack. Just behave yourself, and we won't have any problems, okay? Oh, and the Elder's going to want to talk to you. He's on the second level. Just take a right once you get down there. My office is right here in case you need anything. Just ask for Ramos. Looking sharp, Ramos. Hey yourself, kiddo. And without having to get a shock collar or pass any tests, we can go straight on to talk to Elder McNamara. Now, I wanted to show what happened if you didn't have Veronica in your party, because this tells us a lot about the Brotherhood's character here in the Mojave Wasteland. We learn from this that the Brotherhood is so paranoid about their own safety that they're willing to blow the heads off of innocent explorers if they feel threatened. At any rate, we head through a door and down some steps to enter the primary floor of the bunker. It's easy to get lost here 
here, it is a bit of a maze. We'll go on and explore the whole thing in a minute, but to find Elder McNamara, we need to go to the back of the bunker and turn right. This leads us to a door to level two of the Hidden Valley Bunker. We arrive in a room and we can go either left or right. Left goes to scribes and research, so we'll turn back around and go right to find the Elder. We find Elder McNamara sitting in his throne atop a pedestal. Now with Veronica in our party, she has a conversation with Elder McNamara. This conversation isn't going to make sense to you right now because I haven't talked about Veronica's story yet. I'm saving that for a video that I'm working on right now. But after she and the Elder finish their conversation, he addresses you. When Paladin Ramos informed me that Veronica was approaching with an outsider in tow, at first I didn't know what to think. After giving the matter some thought, however, I've decided that an outsider could be of use to me right now. However, I will not force you to help us. Should you refuse, you will be allowed to leave here, though you'd remain Veronica's responsibility. What do you say, outsider? Are you willing to help us? We can choose to help or not, and to McNamara's credit, if we choose not to help, he lets it slide. Then that is your choice. If you should change your mind, please return. But I'm willing to help these guys for now. Then allow me to explain our situation. This bunker is currently locked down, allowing no entry or exit, with you being one of the few exceptions. In exceptional cases, teams are sent out to investigate sites or retrieve materials deemed too important to ignore. Three such teams have gone missing recently, and the news of their disappearance has not yet been widely spread to avoid undue concern. In order to maintain the peace and adhere to the strictures of the lockdown, I need to send someone else to discover what happened to them. Why don't you get other brothers to deal with this? The less who are aware of this situation, the better. My brothers and sisters were deeply traumatized by the losses we incurred several years ago. It would be imprudent to worry them unduly without first discovering the facts of the situation. All right, Elder, I'll begin looking immediately. I'm glad I can count on you. Oh, and one other thing. The patrols each had a holotape detailing their missions that you can use to track them. The shielding of the bunker prevents us from actively tracking them, but their positions should show up on your map once you get to the surface. Should our worst fears become realized, please bring back all three of the holotapes from the patrols. Otherwise, bring our brothers home. After we accept the quest, we can talk with him to find out more information about the Brotherhood. Why does Elder McNamara have this entire bunker in lockdown? It's a protective measure that was enacted after our defeat at Helios. The NCR was hot on our heels, and we wouldn't have survived another encounter. It was decided that we would stay quiet for a time, heal the wounded, and try to come up with a new strategy. However, after we had fully recuperated, our first scouting measures showed that the NCR's presence in this region had only increased in our absence. There are now more than five times the number of NCR troops in the area as when we fought them, and we have half the number we did at Helios. And so the lockdown has been extended. To go outside would be the death of us all. How do you get supplies? We have some personnel that are allowed to travel on the surface. They trade for what we need and occasionally drop off what they acquire. We make sure that they only enter or leave the bunker while the sandstorm is active, to avoid detection. He mentions the sandstorm, but we learned from Ranger Dobson's journal that this was a natural phenomenon. If the sandstorm is not natural, what is it? That is this base's defensive system. It serves as camouflage and masks all entry and exit from the bunker. We use it to hide our patrols and supply runners, though we still send such out at night to be extra safe. Fascinating, so this pre-war bunker facility can generate a sandstorm to make the bunker completely invisible. And the Brotherhood used this sandstorm at night when they send out their patrols. He also mentioned a few suppliers who go out into the world to get supplies for the Brotherhood. That's Veronica's job. When we meet her at Trading Post 188, she tells us that she's a supply runner for the Brotherhood. As we are about to leave, we get taken aside by a man with a comb over, Head Paladin Harden. So... You're the outsider that's been given leave to wander around freely. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Name's Harden. I'm the head paladin of this chapter, and I think we might be able to help each other out. I don't know what the Elder talked to you about, but I can tell you this chapter is in trouble. And he's at the center of it. Are you willing to listen to what I have to say? Why should I trust you? Why should you trust the Elder? I'd recommend listening to both of us and choosing whom to trust for yourself. So are you willing to listen? That is sound logic. Sure, go ahead. As you may have already heard, this entire base is under a state of lockdown. 
No one goes out except small patrols at night. Most of the chapter has been sealed in here for years. And those few who are outside when the lockdown was initiated are forbidden from returning. Morale has plummeted as time has gone by. And many of our current paladins haven't seen combat outside of training simulations. And all because of the Elder's explicit order that no one be allowed in or out. The only way things will change is if a new Elder is installed. Now we learn from doing Veronica's personal quest that she's frustrated about this too. She wishes the Brotherhood would be more assertive and would leave their bunker more often. And it seems like that sentiment is shared by many of the other people in this bunker. We can ask about that. Veronica seems to be able to come and go as she pleases. What's up with that? Veronica's a special case. She handles the procurement of supplies. If we didn't let her and those like her back in, we'd all starve. If the Elder could manage it, he'd shut them out as well and all in the name of security, which is why we need to replace him. He wants to replace the Elder. Have you tried talking with him first? Of course I have, many times in fact. The Elder has an open door policy and will listen to advice on any subject save this one. He refuses to see that our isolation is slowly weakening us. Aside from being our duty, going out on missions is what kept us strong. And because he fails to see that, he must be replaced. And I suppose you'd nominate yourself, wouldn't you? I would. I'm the senior most paladin in the chapter, and have more combat experience than any two others here put together. I'd gladly support another candidate, but no one has the courage to step forward and make the attempt, so it falls to me. I would put this chapter back on the right path, if I could just assume leadership. All right, how do you propose to do that? I don't know. I've gone through our records dozens of times looking for a precedent regarding the dismissal of an elder and come up with nothing. The people who are most likely to know how it could be done are also some of McNamara's strongest supporters, so they refuse to help me, which is why we're having this conversation. An outsider such as yourself would arouse less suspicion asking questions about such matters. The fact that the elder has some tasks for you means his faithful won't suspect you, and you have a line open to the man himself. In short, you're in a perfect position to help me. Will you at least think about it? Yeah, well, what do I get out of it? If I become Elder, the lockdown will be lifted, and we'll once again be able to send patrols out into the wastes. We'll become powerful again. And when that happens, it will be good to have the Brotherhood as an ally. Good enough? We have two choices. We can say, I want no part of this. I half expected you to say that. In which case, I'll continue to pursue the matter on my own. Should you continue dealing with the Elder and find yourself beginning to see my point of view, I'll be around. But that's no fun, so instead we'll go back and say, I'll see what I can do. That'll have to do. I'd recommend going to see Ramos first. As head of security, he's more familiar with our protocols than anyone else here. You could also try to find something relevant in our data store, though last I heard Scribe Ibsen is having a bit of a problem accessing it. And if McNamara should give you any tasks, I'd ask that you kept me abreast of them. Report anything you find to me, and we'll move from there. All right, so we've stumbled upon a bit of political turmoil here at the Brotherhood of Steel bunker in Hidden Valley. We now have two tasks. We need to help Elder McNamara find the three missing Brotherhood of Steel patrols, and we need to find any evidence that he has somehow betrayed the Brotherhood or done something to warrant his removal from office. That is, only if we think Paladin Harden would make a worthy replacement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine the character of both men while I do these quests to see whom I think would make a better elder of the Brotherhood of Steel. To do so, we must go along with both quests until we come to a point of no return. First up, we need to access some Brotherhood history archives to see if we can find any example in history where an elder has been removed from office. To do so, we go to the nearby archives to talk with Scribe Ibsen. Look, this isn't a great time. Oh, what the hell? It's not like we're making any progress. I'm Ibsen, and I hope your day is going better than mine is. Oh, I've had better. You and me both. The Elder wants this data store operational pronto, but it doesn't look like the damn thing will be working anytime soon. Why is that? One of our exploratory patrols, back when we had exploratory patrols, found a data disk in some ruins out in the waste. Well, we finally got around to cataloging the damn thing and got shut out of our own data store the second it loaded. Turns out it had a virus on it. Why aren't there any patrols anymore? Oh, there are patrols. Just not exploratory ones. We've been in a state of lockdown for, well, let's just say it's been a while. 
The only time anyone gets to go topside is guard duty, or to gather provisions. Other than that, it's steel walls and fluorescent lights for us. Oh, that's horrible. Nah, it's not so bad. The world outside isn't exactly a paradise, you know? Still, you can only breathe recirculated air for so long. We've got more than a few people in here who are going a little stir-crazy. Tell me, Ibsen, what do you think about Hardin trying to get McNamara dismissed? I don't have time to think about silly things like politics right now. My main concern right now is getting this blasted data store up and running. Okay, what kind of information is in the data store? Oh, all kinds of things. There was already information regarding the layout and systems of this bunker, but we've since added our own data as well. Prior to the lockdown, we had extensively scouted the surrounding area and compiled dossiers on nearby points of interest. Now we can focus on that virus, and we can fail a science check to suggest that he just delete all the files that would get rid of the virus. But of course, that would defeat the purpose of us gaining access to those files. We wouldn't be able to read them if they're deleted. Passing the science check gives him the idea to partition the terminals when the virus jumps to them, giving Reed only access to the kernel administrator. Effectively, this means that if you fail the test, you have one fewer terminal to go through. Eventually, you could fail each time to isolate the virus to one terminal that way. But my science isn't that high, and I think my reflexes are fast enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask him if there's anything I can do to help. I suppose it couldn't hurt to get another pair of eyes on this. Maybe you'll be able to come up with something coming at it fresh. While the entire system is infected, the virus itself is spread across three terminals. The problem is that it keeps moving periodically. We'll have it nailed down in a terminal or two, only to have it jump to another set of terminals before we locate the third. Alright, what do I need to do? You'll need to locate it on three different terminals in this area in one minute. Any longer and it'll jump, and you'll have to start all over. Locating the virus would probably be nearly impossible, but the pompous little bastard that wrote it made things a little easier for us. Normally, terminals infected by the virus just display gibberish, but we found that terminals the virus moved to had some real data passed to them. We were able to decrypt the data and discovered that it was just messages from the virus's writer taunting his victims. When you find terminals with those messages, lock them down and move on. Find three of them before the virus jumps, and we'll wipe the damn thing. Oh, jeez. All right, here we go. Best of luck to you. I'll tell the others to take a break so they don't get in your way. Oh, and I'll keep track of when it jumps for you. To maximize your chances, wait for my signal before you begin. Our goal is to figure out which terminal has the virus and isolate it as quickly as possible so that we can move on to the next one. So we're going to be hitting these terminals really quickly. When Ibsen is ready, he gives us the go-ahead. Don't work too hard there, Ibsen. Hmm? Oh, it's you, Veronica. The virus just jumped. So we activate the terminal and then access the data store. Inside, we see a bunch of garbledygook. Now, we could waste time sitting here clicking Reload Data Store, but we won't find the virus that way, so instead, we leave this terminal and rush on to the next one. We do this over and over and over again until we finally find one that says, Isolate Virus. Selecting that option isolates the virus. We can then check the isolation, but we don't want to waste time doing that, so instead, we leave that terminal and move on to the next one. We keep going until we find virus number two. The clock is ticking. We can then isolate the virus. Moving on, we frantically jump from terminal to terminal until we find virus number three. Haha, <laughs> suckers, catch me if you can. Well, buddy, I think I just caught you. That's it, we got it. The virus has been purged. You actually did it? If you don't mind my saying so, I didn't think you had a chance in hell of pulling it off. But I'm glad to be wrong for once. Thank you, my friend. Please feel free to access the data store at your leisure. I'm only allowed to give you access to non-classified topics, but it's better than nothing, right? Alright, non-classified is better than nothing. Maybe now that I've helped you, you can tell me more about your opinions between Hardin and McNamara. I can understand how the man might be frustrated by the current situation. He's a take-charge sort of fellow. Standing around's not his strong suit. I myself often wish we could end this interminable stasis and begin moving forward again. Alright, sounds like Scribe Ibsen sympathizes with Paladin Harden. So if we wanted to, how do we get access to the classified top secret data? Well, you'd have to get a senior level member of the chapter to unlock a topic for you. I've given you access to what I can, but that's not much. The majority of topics fall under Ramos's aegis, since they'd constitute a security risk. Good luck getting anything out of him. You might have better luck with another member of the senior staff. Try talking to them about it. 
Right, so we need to talk with Ramos, the fellow whom we met at the entrance, to gain access to some more topics in this terminal. But let's see what we have access to now. We see an option on bunker information, and then two different entries. The first is Project Goals Hidden Valley. This gives us pre-war information about the creation of this bunker system by the United States military. It was designed to be a self-sustaining shelter for high-ranking VIPs in the government and military. It was also designed to be a command structure in times of crisis. It is buried so deeply underground, and it has so many protective layers, that only a direct hit by a bunker-busting weapon could destroy it. And this technology is outside the capability of any of America's enemies. But just in case they ever get a weapon like this, the bunker comes equipped with the Dervish camouflage system, making it impossible for enemies to directly target the bunker. The Dervish system is the simulated weather system that we see manifested in the form of sandstorms that the Brotherhood uses at night. The next note is all about system information, and it gets a little technical, just telling us how this technology works. The bunker is powered by the Candle Fusion Power System, designed to supply the bunker with power for 752 years. Since this was written about 200 years ago, the Brotherhood can stay here for quite a long time. We then learn how the sandstorms are generated by the Dervish system. Here's how it works. The sand all around the bunker is actually made up of aluminum and various silicates. They're ground into a fine powder and spread all over the valley. The bunker then uses a quote, widespread network of industrial fans to blanket the area in a cloud of what is essentially chaff. The camouflage system also depends upon the electronic countermeasures at the nearby array at Black Mountain, but together, this defense system makes Hidden Valley effectively impossible to target. Wow, what a lucky find that the Brotherhood just strolled on into here. Seems like an excellent fortification. Interesting information, but it doesn't really help us get Haldren the information he needs. Heading back out the archives and turning left down the hallway, we enter a large room with VR simulators lining the perimeter. In charge of this room is Head Scribe Taggart. Ah, the outsider. I suppose it's too much to ask that jarhead Ramos to keep outsiders away from my research. I am Head Scribe Taggart, and I am much too busy to deal with the likes of you right now. Not the talkative type. Ideas. Scribe Taggart, it's your favorite student. Yes, well, it's uh, nice to see you too, Veronica. Sounds like he and Veronica have a past, though. I can hardly notice that lazy eye anymore, Watkins. Still hiding that hair of yours, Veronica. Which makes Watkins a little... jealous? Since Tagger didn't want to talk, maybe we can get more information from his apprentice, Watkins. We can ask her what all these computers are for. It's our virtual reality training hall. We don't really go out all that often anymore, so this is how we stay sharp. Did you used to go out a lot in the past? Yeah, a lot more. Back when we were at the Helio station. Oh, crap. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to talk about that, especially with outsiders. So forget you just heard that, okay? Yeah, she seems a little young. Shouldn't you be in school or something? Head Scribe Taggart quickly realized my extraordinary talent when I took the mandatory VR combat testing. Soon after that, he requested that I get transferred to VR specialist training, serving as his assistant. I miss hanging out with the other students all the time, but at least I get to skip all those boring lectures. Oh, okay. Tell me about yourself. Well, like just about everyone else here, I grew up in the Brotherhood. My father was a scribe and my mother a paladin. Who do you take after more, your mom or your dad? I don't know. I'm a little like both of them, I guess. If I had to choose, I really don't know which I'd pick. That's a question I've been asked a lot lately, since it's something I have to decide for myself soon. What do you mean decide for yourself? I'm currently an apprentice in the Brotherhood, and recently became eligible for journeyman status. But first I have to decide which order I want to join. The Knights or the Scribes? Tell me about the Knights. Knights are in charge of all of our equipment. Power armor, Gatling lasers, you name it. All of it built and maintained by knights. Knights also get to go out on patrols, scouting assignments, and support the paladins in offensive operations. Being a knight would mean getting to see more of the world, fight the Brotherhood's enemies, and possibly someday become a paladin like my mother. And the scribes? The scribes are responsible for discovering how all the old tech we recover actually works, and sometimes even work on inventing new things. Without them, the Brotherhood could never fulfill its mission, 
Or at least that's what my dad always used to say. Where are your parents? They both died at Helios 1. The others were always like a family to me before that. But afterward, they became my family in truth. Well, poor thing lost her parents at Helios 1. Still, she doesn't really seem like the brightest bulb in the basket, does she? I wonder exactly why Taggart has her here. The terminals in this room are related to the self-destruct sequence programmed into this bunker. To initiate the self-destruct sequence, we need the key cards of the Head Scribe, Head Paladin, and the Elder, McNamara, Haldren, and Taggart. With those three cards, we can use the nearby mainframe terminal to cause the bunker to self-destruct. Now, there are certain endings in the game if you side with certain factions that will bring you here to do just that. But I'm not genocidal. I'm gonna try and avoid that if at all possible. Heading back out and turning right, we come to the scribe workshop. Here we see scribes and paladins working hard on research and repairing technology. This workshop is led by Senior Knight Lorenzo. Hello. Hmm? Oh, you must be the outsider everyone's buzzing about. Pleased to meet you. I'm Lorenzo, senior knight and general handyman around here. But he doesn't really have much for us yet, though he will be important later on. Now that we've fully explored level 2, we can go back to explore level 1. This bunker is a bit of a maze, but it's not that bad. There are only a few really important sections. I'll skip by some of the mundane and less important things like bathrooms and personal bedrooms. In one of the rooms, we find the clinic. The clinic is manned by senior scribe Schuler. Hello, you must be the outsider everyone's talking about. I'm Linda Schuller. If you ever need medical attention, this is the place to come. I handle all medical needs in the bunker. If you're ever wounded, I can treat you. For a fee. Normally I'd just be the base's medical officer. But my other duties say otherwise. You mentioned other duties here? I'm this bunker's head scribe in everything but name. I supervise the research teams. I collate the reports. I attend the meetings. But for reasons beyond me, that buffoon Taggart still gets the title. And don't get me started on that little pet of his. Everyone around here knows what's going on there but her. Ah, just as I thought. Sounds like she resents Taggart. I don't appreciate how much harder I have to work to cover for his tendency to focus on his personal projects. I try not to think too much about his personal proclivities. It's interesting that Taggart got all flustered and nervous when Veronica said, Hey, it's your favorite student. Makes me wonder if while Veronica was a student, Taggart tried to groom her for something else. But he must have failed. Veronica went on to do other things, and so his attention fell to Apprentice Watkins. Taggart had her removed from the classroom, possibly to reduce her exposure to other men, thus reducing his competition. She doesn't talk much about the decision between Paladin Hardin or McNamara as Elder. However, we can take a look at her terminal in her clinic to read some of her journals. Her first journal, Journal Entry O one was written immediately after their horrible loss at Helios 1. She says that it was a hard day. She lost more than twice as many as she saved. She thinks she's lost over half their numbers, all for some broken down solar energy station that barely works. She says that if Elijah hadn't gone missing, she might have refused to treat him. Elijah was the previous elder. Of course, we know that Elijah was there for the Archimedes too, not for the solar array, but it looks like he didn't tell anyone else that. Sometime later, she went back to edit her first journal entry, saying that she never imagined she'd spend the next few years of her life trapped underground. Journal 260 is an interesting one. In Journal 260, she says that she's been treating some people for mild respiratory problems. But come to think of it, there were some respiratory problems last week, too. She says, maybe I should talk to Lorenzo. Maybe something's breaking down. Hmm, let's put a pin in that for later. She ends by saying, damn that Taggart. She ended up getting stuck scheduling the Junior Scribes experiments again. She says, Of all the Brotherhood Scribes in the Waste, I get stuck with a lecherous scatterbrain for a boss. Perhaps Hardin is right. Maybe it is time for change. Oh dear. Heading around the corner brings us to the firing range and armory. Paladin Morgan manages the range. Welcome to the range. Feel free to use any open lane. The Elder's already given the okay. Unfortunately, you'll have to use your own weapons and ammo. In front of him is a door that leads to the shop. The word came down from the Elder that I'm to offer you some of our lesser wares. As if I didn't have other matters on my mind. Is there anything I can help you with, Knight Torres? If you must know, my inventory check this week shows that our weapon count is one short. Somehow we're missing a laser pistol. Hardin will have my head if I don't find that weapon soon. 
I can't delay my report to him any longer. A laser pistol? I can look around for that for you. If you happen to find it, bring it here right away. I might be able to throw a few supplies your way if you do. She has a decent selection of gear. I'm mainly interested in the ammunition, but we'll have to come back and check this once we improve our relationship with the Brotherhood. We can go back and talk with Paladin Morgan about the missing weapon. Torres must be getting desperate if she's accepting help on this one. I'll tell you what I told her. My records show that Initiate Stanton was the last to check it out, but checked it back in a day later. Initiate Stanton. I think we saw him walking around earlier. We often find him wandering the halls on the first floor. Yes, can I help you? We could ask him if he's seen the missing pistol. No, no idea. Sorry. That seems short and abrupt. We've already received information that he was the last one to check it out. We can confront him with this information. Oh, man. I told Watkins this wasn't going to work. Look, Watkins and I snuck out one day. She said it'd be a training exercise. Said she heard from a guy on one of the patrols that there was a gulch just southeast of here with scorpions in it, and that we had to check it out. There were scorpions out there, all right. We started using them for target practice, but before we knew it, the damn things were all around us. So we made a run for it, and in all the commotion, I dropped my pistol. Watkins keeps urging me to go back and get it, but that's not going to happen. You can go outside, though, can't you? You can return the pistol to Torres and clear this whole thing up for me. All right, why do the records show that the gun was turned back in? Oh, I sort of altered the records after we got back. That was Watkins' idea, too. That girl is nothing but trouble. Still, I haven't been exiled yet, or worse, assigned to latrine cleaning duty. But I will if you don't help me find that gun. Can't we just use another laser pistol? No. Weapon checking protocol includes verifying the serial number of the weapon, so a different gun would be noticed. Plus, having a new gun suddenly show up would immediately point to you, being the only outsider around here and all. No. The only way I have out of this is if you help me find that gun. You'll help me, right? All right, I'll look for it for you. Great. When you find it, just turn it into Torres and I'll be in the clear. Of course, he got in trouble with Watkins. The beauty of the bunker, but not necessarily the brightest one. Now there is another level to this bunker. Beneath this floor are a bunch of other doors that lead to terminals, bedrooms, and storage rooms. In one room, we find an average locked terminal. Unlocking it reveals that this belongs to Lorenzo, the mechanic and handyman inside the workshop. The first entry tells us that Lorenzo has discovered that Poseidon Energy once experimented far beyond the Brotherhood of Steel's current power armor and weapon capabilities. He theorizes that Poseidon Energy is responsible for all of the equipment used by the Enclave. He then wonders why, even though they've found numerous caches of military equipment throughout the wastes, they can't find anything from this company. Well, we found something. We found a laser rifle, the Q36 Matter Modulator, built using research from Repcon, Robco, and Poseidon Energy. And of course, we found the Euclid Sea Finder, which communicates with the Archimedes II, which was made by Poseidon Energy. So we know the Poseidon Energy technology exists in the Mojave Wasteland. It's just a matter of finding it. Maybe this is exactly what Elijah was thinking while he was at Helios 1. In the next note, we learn that Lorenzo has uncovered something horrifying. He doesn't elaborate. He says he's going to go straight to the Elder. In the next entry, apparently he's already gone to the Elder and received instructions. The Elder asked him for locations for a list of supplies that he needs, but for what purpose? Could this have something to do with what we read on Linda Schuler's terminal? Schuler, the medic, the real head scribe, she said something about how she was getting an increase in respiratory problems at the clinic. She guessed that something might be breaking down. Maybe the list of parts he was instructed to create has something to do with that. It seems like the supplies that he needs are buried underground. Strangely enough, at the very end, he says, if only I knew where there are more bunkers or even some of those Robco vaults? Surely he meant Vault-Tec vaults, didn't he? Robco didn't create the vaults. Now, they were responsible for the Pip-Boy, so in a sense they were partnered with Vault-Tec, but why would he refer to it as a Robco vault? Maybe Lorenzo's just confused here. Maybe he's never been to a Vault-Tec vault. Maybe he's never heard of the company Vault-Tec. He's only ever seen a Pip-Boy, and on the Pip-Boy, he saw the words Robco, so maybe he naturally thought that the vaults were made by Robco. That's the only 
way I can explain this gaff. So it sounds like something dark and dangerous is about to happen here at the bunker. We'll explore more to see if we can uncover the mystery. This under level has a lot of private quarters. It looks like this is where many of the soldiers go to sleep. But we need to get permission from Paladin Ramos to access top secret confidential information in the archives. So heading back upstairs towards the entrance, we find Ramos reading a terminal in his office. We can take the opportunity to unlock his other terminal and snoop inside. Hey, Ramos. Behave yourself this time, Veronica. The first journal entry is about those missing patrols that McNamara told us about. Ramos hasn't heard any word from them yet, but here we learn that he too was really hoping Elder McNamara would end the lockdown. But after this event, he's not so sure. The events in the next note has Paladin Ramos scratching his head. He says, A few of our best men headed out around the same time as the patrols without my knowing about it. He asked the Elder about it, but the Elder just said that they were on an important mission. But he didn't bother to tell Ramos about it. Ramos says, was this mission too important to tell the chief of security about? Something's up. In the final note, we learned that the entire bunker is getting really restless. Ramos had to break up three fights this week alone. He worries that if the lockdown continues any longer, but that's when we interrupted him. It's strange, we interrupt his thought, but he actually writes a longer paragraph telling us that he's about to get up to answer the door than the previous paragraph when he was expressing his thoughts on the lockdown. <laughs> When done, we can interrupt Paladin Ramos from his reading. Your presence here, let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. So you're the head of security? That's right. Nothing gets in or out of here without me knowing it. What are the rules about entering and leaving? Under the lockdown, only essential personnel are permitted to enter or leave. That includes supply runners and high security patrols. All other personnel are forbidden to leave, and any personnel that were out there when the lockdown was enacted are forbidden from returning. For the sake of argument, what would an elder have to do to lose his job? So you've been talking to Harden, eh? He's been looking for a way to usurp McNamara ever since the lockdown started. Don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But Elder McNamara has done all right by us. If it weren't for him, none of us would have survived at Helios. I'll tell you what I told Harden. There have been only a few cases of elders being dismissed from their posts in the Brotherhood's history. And those involve crimes that someone like Elder McNamara is just not capable of. You can look it up for yourself if you want. I'll grant you access to that portion of the history section of our data store. See Senior Scribe Ibsen about accessing it. Wow, we didn't even have to work for that one. He just gives us access. Sounds like he's sick of this lockdown too. But let's hear more about Helios 1. What happened there, Paladin Ramos? I'm sure someone's told you all this before. Several years back, we were running our chapter out the Helios-1 solar power station. Our elder at the time, Elijah, had some kind of obsession with the place, which is the only reason we stayed as long as we did. That place was hardly defensible, and we knew the NCR was moving in on us, but the elder refused to budge, insisting that he just needed more time. We never found out what he needed time for. Wave upon wave of NCR troopers hit us from all directions. We held out for a time, but we were grossly outnumbered, and they had more men than we had ammo. Eventually, our positions collapsed. Elder Elijah was nowhere to be found, so McNamara took charge and led what remained of us on a counteroffensive west. We lost a lot of men and women, but we broke through and made it here. Make no mistake, McNamara saved this chapter that day. Who's Elijah? Who was Elijah, more like? He was our elder before McNamara. Bright guy, but just between you and me, he was a little off. Our mission is to recover and preserve the technology of the past. But Elijah wanted more. He sought ways to improve upon technology, make it better. When we found Helios 1, he was like a kid in a candy store, kept talking about the potential and a grand design never realized. He even insisted we set up our base there, against the objection of nearly every paladin. What followed is a whole other story. Well, we know why Elder Elijah was obsessed with Helios 1. We just came from there, and it's there where we found the Archimedes II orbiting laser weapon, controlled by the Euclid Seafinder. That kind of weapon could give dangerous power to almost any faction. That is what Elder Elijah was looking for, but he was so obsessed with the technology that he was blind to everything going on around him. It was Elijah's mistakes, his failure to abandon Helios 1 on time, that led to so many unnecessary deaths 
at Helios 1. And then he just up and disappeared? We learn from Veronica's story that Veronica was his little apprentice. They almost had a father-daughter relationship, but he just up and vanishes. Where did he go? We'll learn more about Elijah when we visit the Sierra Madre Casino in another video. But for now, we need to go back to the archives to see if we can find more information that sets a precedent for removing an elder from office. With the classified information unlocked, we find a new entry. Elder Dismissal Incidents. There are three incidents. In the first one, we learn that a Brotherhood of Steel elder, Raymond Lorne, was removed as elder for murdering someone named Senior Scribe Ritter. Lorne claimed that it was just a tragic case of friendly fire. The bunker was under attack at the time, but the tribunal decided that Lorne simply could not remain as elder with such a cloud of suspicion hanging over him. Interesting. These surely can't refer to events with this chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel working out of this bunker. After all, they've only been here since the Helios 1 incident, which was not that long ago. So this must be referring to a different bunker and a different Brotherhood of Steel chapter, possibly somewhere in California. The second incident is the one we want. Elder Kenneth Jones was removed from office for violating the chain that binds. Whatever that is, what on earth is the chain that binds? We'll have to ask Ramos about that. The third incident involves Elder David James, who was removed as Elder for destroying technology. They recovered some sort of unknown technology from a recent expedition, and as soon as he got his hands on it, Brother James destroyed it. When he was questioned, he refused to talk with anyone about it. I can understand why this could be seen as treason by the Brotherhood. They're all about uncovering, understanding, and securing technology to keep it out of the hands of those whom they don't like. Maybe this Elder thought that even the Brotherhood could not be trusted with this level of technology. But anyway, Anyway, we're left with a question about the chains that bind. What exactly is this Brotherhood tradition or law? Heading back up to Paladin Ramos, we can ask him. That's an old, old principle that's been around since the Brotherhood was founded. It basically means that you have to obey a superior officer. It's pretty much common sense, but it gets invoked a lot when people get pissy about following orders. If you're curious, I'll give you access to the data store entry on it. You'd probably be the first to read it in years, if not decades. All right, so he unlocks another data store on the chains that bind. Heading all the way back down to the archives, we find a new article on the chain that binds. The chain that binds is a law that has two precepts. The first is that orders from superiors must always be obeyed. And the second part of this law is that orders are supposed to observe the chain of command and not skip ranks. A superior may only give orders to his direct subordinates and not to those far beneath them. Doing so violates the chain that binds. So you can violate this law by disobeying the order of your direct supervisor or by giving orders to somebody who directly reports to somebody else. So an initiate, for example, probably reports to a teacher or a knight, and it would break the chain that binds for the elder, for example, to give orders to someone of that low of a rank. Well, we've exhausted all examples of elders being forcibly removed from office that we found in these terminals. Really, the only lead we have is the chain that binds. Is this going to be enough for Head Paladin Harden? I could hardly call myself Head Paladin if I didn't. It's one of the first things every initiate learns when they start training. I could be wrong, but I think that's a dead end. McNamara has always followed orders, and we've been incommunicado since fleeing Helios. Well, in the document, we read two parts to the chain that binds. Do you understand the second part? That is the standard procedure, yes. For example, McNamara gives orders to Head Scribe Taggart who then relays further orders to the scribes. I wasn't aware that failing to do so was punishable, however. Interesting. If we can just find an instance where McNamara went around someone and gave orders to their subordinates, we'll have him. All right, well, we'll bear that in mind, but let's see if we can learn more about Paladin Hardin's character by listening to him talk a little bit. Hardin, do you know that the Elder has us looking for the lost Brotherhood of Steel patrols? Yes. I know the loss of the patrols has weighed heavily on his mind for some time. He took it very personally when they first went missing. That was when I first began to seriously question his ability to lead us. A commander has to be able to deal with the potential loss of his men. It's strange that he would ask you to find mission disks on them, however. The missing paladins were all on standard patrols, which don't need them. Only brothers sent on special assignments are given mission disks. If you should find any on the lost patrols, let me know. What do you think of this lockdown? It's a travesty is what it is. 
Every second we sit on our hands down here is another second that we're not fulfilling our sworn duty. Why do you dislike McNamara so much? It's not that I dislike the Elder, but I strongly disapprove of his current style of leadership. We're safe, yes, but at what cost? All right, well, what would you do if you became Elder? After lifting the lockdown, the first thing I'd do is send scouts out to recon the area. We need to know what's going on out there. Next, I'd resume patrols in the near vicinity and begin sending search teams out to the spots the scouts reported were relatively safe. It's standard procedure when a chapter relocates to an area. But standard procedure wasn't our last elder's style, either. You mentioned the last elder, Elijah. Tell us what you thought about Elijah. Elijah was a strange one. His even becoming elder was highly questionable, seeing as how he was a scribe. Typically, only paladins are eligible. But an exception was made in his case on account of him being a genius. Unfortunately, whatever scientific acumen he had didn't extend to tactics. Trying to defend Helios was a blunder of the worst kind, and many brothers lost their lives because of it. Many of the senior paladins, myself included, advised him to fight a retreating action, but he refused to budge. Said he almost had it working. We never did find out exactly what he was talking about. When the perimeter was finally overrun, the Elder had simply vanished. Helios was the worst goddamn action I've seen in a long, long career of fighting. Gosh, the guy's really bitter over Helios 1. Not that I think he's wrong. I mean, from everything I've heard, it sounds like Elder Elijah really made a huge mistake and was extremely selfish focusing on that technology. And it cost so many people their lives. And I do like the idea of the Brotherhood becoming more active instead of being so secretive in this bunker. But I just worry. I know what they do to people when they feel like there's the possibility of being threatened even before they are threatened. After all, they strapped a shock collar to my neck. And from everything I've seen, the leadership structure of the Brotherhood of Steel is not very democratic at all. Looks like elders can be appointed by a tribunal, but who appoints the tribunal? Is there an election? And the laws of the Brotherhood are just so focused on technology. There's much more to life, as Veronica is discovering, than just the preservation and hoarding of technology. I mean, I don't think Hardin is a bad man. I think he has the best of intentions. I think he's an honest and loyal Brotherhood of Steel member. And McNamara is clearly a hero. He single-handedly saved the entire Brotherhood of Steel from being destroyed at Helios 1. He's just making foolish decisions right now because he's so scared. And there's also something he's not telling us. Something we need to uncover. And I'm not entirely pleased with a guy who's not straightforward with me, so... Gosh, I'm having a really hard time here. I don't know which man I'd rather be Elder of the Brotherhood. To clear my head on the topic, let's leave the bunker and complete some of the quests that the Brotherhood has sent us on. First, let's find the missing laser weapon. Exiting the bunker and walking east, we can go through a broken gap in the fence to find a small canyon. Walking up the canyon, we begin to see giant rad scorpions. This is in accordance with the story that we heard. They dropped the weapon after they got attacked by rad scorpions. Here we find the body of a dead prospector. Looks like there are indeed dangerous scorpions about. And coming over a ridge, we find a big pit filled with scorpions. Heading down into the pit, we can use vats to pick off as many of these scorpions as we can. Once they're all dead, we can go to a rock in the middle of this pit. We find a dead wastelander with a Sunset Sansparilla Star bottle cap on his inventory. And on top of a rock near this body, we find the missing laser pistol. We can then go back to the bunker and return it to Knight Torres. Oh, thank God. Hardin was about to start an inquiry into the whole affair, and more than a few heads would have rolled as a result. Since you helped me, I'll tell you what. I work on some of our busted weapons in my spare time, so I have a few pieces that are kept off the books. Here, take this. I hope it comes in handy. Much to the relief of Initiate Stanton. Hey, I heard the pistol got returned. Thanks a lot. I am never going to listen to Watkins again, believe me. But talking with Watkins, she's completely unremorseful. That was so much fun. The wind whipping through our hair, not knowing what was going to jump out at us at any moment. And when those scorpions came out, it was just like The Sims. All I had to do was line them up and then squeeze the trigger. I doubt I'll be able to get Stanton to go with me again, though. I thought he'd enjoy it as much as I did, but he was just scared the whole time. Don't tell him I told you this, but when those scorpions surrounded us, I'd bet a week's rations he pissed himself. It's like she doesn't even understand the danger she was in. Next, we need to find the missing recon patrols. This puts us on three long 
dangerous adventures, which I've covered in detail in other videos. We find the first patrol at the top floor of the Repcon building. The ceiling has collapsed and crushed them to death. On one of the corpses, we find the Brotherhood of Steel mission holotape. The holotape's temporary password is lives to fight another day. This is a reference to the famous saying by Athenian Demosthenes, who lived in 338 BC, who said, he who fights and runs away will live to fight another day. Demosthenes was a soldier in a battle between the Macedonians and the Athenians. The Macedonians won and slaughtered around 3,000 Athenians. Demosthenes ran from the battlefield and was later censured for his desertion. Whenever someone called him a coward, he would respond by saying, the man who runs away may fight again. This holotape is a direct order to these two paladins, Paladin Matisse and Lander, to go to the Repcon building to search for components the Brotherhood needs and to compile a list of any other items to retrieve from the Repcon building. Signed, McNamara. This is black and white evidence that Elder McNamara gave direct orders to Brotherhood of Steel paladins instead of to Haldren, who is the head paladin. The way the chains that bind are supposed to work is that if the Elder wants to say something to a scribe, he gives the orders to the head scribe. If he wants to give orders to a paladin, he gives the orders to a head paladin. And then those orders are relayed down the chain of command. This is a violation of the chain that binds and it's all Haldren needs to oust McNamara as Elder and take over himself. We have two more patrols to find. The next is in Boomer territory. We find the bodies of the soldiers out in the ruins. The Boomers have bombed them to death. This was Paladin Razaline. Temporary password, and to dare to do it. This is a reference to a quote by Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington. When he was asked what the best test of a great general is, he responded by saying, to know when to retreat and to dare to do it. McNamara made a huge mistake here. He sent Paladin Razaline to Boomer territory under the assumption that they didn't have any weapons that could seriously threaten someone in a full suit of power armor. He sent her there to scout it out to see if she could find any components that he needs, and he ends by saying, the threat level is considered minimal. What a farce that turned out to be, as we stand here reading this over her corpse. The final patrol was sent to Black Mountain. We find their bodies in the bottom of a crater, amongst the bones and corpses of other people and cattle. These have been killed and were in the process of being eaten by the named Centaur Mo and other abominations. On their bodies, we find the mission statement, the password for this one, the better part of valor. This, of course, comes from the famous saying, Discretion is the better part of valor. It was used in a poem by Charles Churchill, even in a hero's heart, discretion is the better part, in 1762, and Shakespeare even used it in Henry IV, which was said by Falstaff. The better part of valor is discretion, in the which better part I have saved my life. In short, it means that it's wiser to look before you leap. These were Paladins Hughes and Fairbanks. McNamara sent them to the Black Mountain Communications Array to look for components mentioned in the briefing. He says that the mutants there have been reasonable in the past and they may prove helpful. But of course we know that after exploring Black Mountain, all of that has changed. What are these components he needs? Why did he send out these patrols? Now, we have all the evidence we need to oust McNamara as Elder. We could go right now to Paladin Hardin and give him the these holotapes. But before we make our decision, let's go as far as we can with McNamara to try and understand his reasoning. Why was he so hasty with the lives of these paladins? Why did he choose to violate the chain that binds and not go through the chain of command like he was supposed to? Going back to Hidden Valley, we can tell Elder McNamara of our success. They were all dead then. I suppose I'm not surprised. We have few friends in the world above, and many enemies. But we must turn our minds to other matters. When I sent out those patrols, I also sent three knights out on scouting missions. When the patrols failed to return, we assumed the worst, and sent a single communication to the scouts to hold position and maintain radio silence. I want you to contact those scouts and gather their reports. Like the patrols, they have devices on them that will enable you to track them. When you find them, tell them you're my representative and ask them if the bears are still hunting. That should get them to talk to you. Return when you've gathered all of their reports. So, we need to go find some scouts in the area. Well, we can go to Head Paladin Hardin and tell him that McNamara is sending us out again. 
That's a sensible notion. Your familiarity with the nearby terrain makes you perfect as a liaison. I've been trying to get the Elder to send out scouts for years, and he's always been resistant to the idea. Said they'd be a vulnerability. I wonder what changed his mind. I wonder indeed. McNamara has been so reserved, so secretive, wanting to stay underground, and yet here he goes and sends out these three patrols that all get killed, and then sends out these three scouts that we need to go find. Why? To find the first scout, we head to Nipton. In the hills overlooking the town, we find a Brotherhood of Steel soldier standing on a rock. As we approach, he threatens us. Don't take another step if you value your life. For what purpose do you approach me? We can try and ask him what he's doing here. That's none of your business. I suggest you head back the way you came. But that doesn't work. We can tell him we're just passing through. If so, you may wish to go around that town to the south. It's been taken by slavers, and they seem to be waiting for something. Or someone. But that doesn't work, so instead we tell him what McNamara told us to tell him. To ask if the bears are still hunting. Strange that the Elder should send an outsider. But I suppose he has his reasons. My observations have mostly focused on the small town to the south of here. It was cruelly attacked, its inhabitants slain nearly to the last. That such an act could occur so far west is nearly unthinkable. The NCR has forces in all directions, and an outpost scant miles west from here. That they have not responded to this violence shows either an unwillingness or inability to properly defend their borders, which is telling. I've collected such musings in this report. Please take it to the Elder. So this scout observed the destruction of Nipton at the hands of Caesar's Legion, and the fact that the NCR didn't respond to it makes them think that the NCR is weak. Next, we head to the rocky hillside just outside the NCR Correctional Facility. This is the place that is completely overrun by powder gangers, escaped convicts. After giving this scout the password, he opens up. You speak truly, for it is unlikely that an outsider would know both the Elder's name and that passphrase. Very well. I've been observing the penal facility there in the distance for some time now, after having followed some rather disturbing rumors. The facility was run by the NCR for a time, but the prisoners overcame their guards and now use the prison as a base from which to conduct raids. What puzzles me is why these men have been allowed to run wild for so long unchecked. Why has the NCR not retaken this place? Give this to the Elder. My observations are all within. Perhaps he will have a better idea of what this situation portends. More evidence that the NCR may be weaker than the Brotherhood at one time thought. Next, we head to the town of Nelson. Now, we cleared Nelson of the Legion menace in a previous video, but the Brotherhood of Steel's scout was there and saw the whole thing happen. Using the passphrase, we can get his report. Then I am sworn to report. I've been dividing my time between the camps to the north and south of here. One belongs to the NCR the other to a band of slavers known as Caesar's Legion. I was sure the NCR would quickly win, but that has not happened. Instead, the two sides maintained a long stalemate, and only after an extended duration did the NCR finally destroy its opponent. When they did, it appeared they did so with the help of fresh reinforcements. I do not believe they could have managed the feat without them. That savages such as these could last so long against the NCR is troubling. Please, take my findings to the Elder. He'll know what to make of this. He's talking about our activities here. Remember in my video on Camp Forlorn Hope, we went around to the other NCR camps in the area to secure reinforcements for Camp Forlorn Hope so that together we could retake the town of Nelson. But the fact that the NCR took too long to act is another sign of weakness. Maybe the NCR is not quite as powerful as the Brotherhood thought. With the reports from the scouts, we can take this information back to Elder McNamara. Good, let's take a look. Hmm. If I'm reading this right, it appears that the NCR's grip on this region is nowhere near as firm as I thought. I'll have to review these in detail, but these reports have given me much to think about. Thank you, Outsider. You've become someone I can count on, so I believe I can share something rather confidential with you. Go on, Elder McDamara, go on. The device that creates the sandstorms above, that masks our comings and goings, was only intended to be used in case of emergencies. It was never meant to be used with any regularity, and the other systems here were not designed to accommodate such usage. In particular, the air filtration system simply cannot handle the quantity of sand and grit that it's been forced to cope with these last few years. As a result, the system is failing, albeit slowly. 
I'm told we have a scant few months before it shuts down completely. Should that happen, it will quickly become impossible to breathe here in the bunker. Already the air quality begins to slightly worsen. I would like you to find the components we need to fix this bunker's air filtration system. I cannot overstate the importance of this task. See Senior Knight Lorenzo for the details. He's the one who brought the matter to my attention, and the only other person who is aware of it. At last we understand. This was the horrible discovery that Lorenzo made, that they wouldn't be able to be in this bunker for that much longer. This is why Senior Scribe Schuler has been treating a lot of the soldiers for respiratory problems. And this is why Elder McNamara violated the chain that binds. He didn't want to cause panic within the bunker, and the fewer people who knew that the filtration system was about to go belly up, the less chance there would be for mass panic panic, the less chance there would be for someone to try and usurp power, like Hardin, the less chance there would be for violence. Now at this point, we can still go to Hardin and tell him about what we found on the holotapes, that Elder McNamara violated the chain that binds. But seeing as how we still have a little bit more time, let's go talk to Lorenzo to learn more about this air filtration system. So now I'm going to have your death on my conscience too? Great. What do you mean, two? Has this happened before? You think you're the first person the Elders trusted with this? He sent three of our patrols out looking for those components, and they're all dead. I was the one who supplied the Elder with the location of possible sites where we could find the components, so their deaths are my fault. And now it's your turn. Well, don't say you weren't warned. I won't take the blame when you die horribly. But I can tell you're getting impatient. The items I'll need to keep the system running are a differential pressure controller, a reverse pulse cleaner, and several HEPA cartridge filters. At present, my best guess for finding the items would be to search any of the old vaults in the area. Those vaults were usually built much like these military bunkers, even using the same contractors in their constructions at times. I'll mark the vaults' locations on your map. Best of luck to you. So we need to go to three of the vaults in the area to collect the supplies that the three patrols whose bodies we found never did. Sounds like McNamara jumped the gun. He sent these patrols out before he really knew where to look. None of these patrols actually went to vaults. We learned from Lorenzo's terminal that he didn't really know where to look. He must have finally deduced it after McNamara sent the initial three patrols. Heading outside, we see the camouflage defensive system in place. The sandstorm is in full swing in the middle of night, and of course it's now that they send out their patrols. Our task first takes us to Vault 22. I did an entire video covering Vault 22, but we find six of the HEPA-20 cartridge filters in a locker on the second level, which is the oxygen recycling level. This is the same level where we find Keeley. To get to these lockers, we have to go through the caves first, because otherwise the entrance is blocked. Second, we need to go to Vault 3. I also did a video all about Vault 3, which you can watch if you want to see this entire encounter broken down. But if you're neutral with the fiends here because you're doing the quest Abadaba Honeymoon with the Great Khans, or if you've decided to clear all of the fiends here, you can find the reverse pulse cleaner in a locker in the same room where we find Motor Runner. And finally, we go to Vault 11. I also did an in-depth video on Vault 11. We find the differential pressure controller in an underwater portion of the vault. We find it in one of the lockers there. Once you have all three items, you can then take them back to Elder McNamara. But this is the point of no return. Once you turn in this quest, you can no longer oust Elder McNamara and make Senior Paladin Hardin Elder. So we need to make a choice. Who do we think is going to be a better Elder? Paladin Hardin with the comb over? A valiant warrior? A true dyed-in-the-wool brotherhood supporter? Confident? A man who will stand his ground? Or Elder McNamara? A war hero who saved the remaining Brotherhood of Steel soldiers? The man who is the sole reason the Brotherhood still exists in this area today, but a cautious man, a man who likes to wait and sit back and watch. Well, typically we don't have the luxury of hindsight, but with this video, I'm going to show you both outcomes. And then at the end, I'll tell you which one I like best. First, let's side with Hardin. To do so, at any time before turning in the components McNamara needs to fix the air filtration system, go to Hardin and tell him about the evidence we found on the mission disks on the three patrols McNamara sent out. Just as I thought, McNamara gave my men new orders without telling me. The nerve of that man. This little stunt is probably what got them killed in the first place. Our normal patrol routes are known to be relatively safe. This is exactly what I've been looking for. 
McNamara gave my men new orders without telling me, thereby breaking the chain that binds. With this, I can finally have him removed as Elder and end this ridiculous lockdown. So what happens now? There are a number of people I'll need to talk to. The process won't be instantaneous, but with this evidence, my path is clear. It shouldn't take more than a few days, and then we can begin moving forward again. Now at this point, nobody knows that the air filtration system is going down except Lorenzo and McNamara himself. So of course, Hardin is outraged that McNamara would go above his head like this. Coming back a few days later, we find Senior Paladin Hardin, now Elder Hardin, sitting where McNamara once sat. Welcome, my friend. A new day has dawned for this chapter, and moving forward, we will no longer cower in the dark. And we have you to thank for it. You'll find that I can be generous to those who show loyalty. Here, take this key. If you ever find yourself in need of repair, head to our safe house to the northeast. Now, what can I do for you? We can then ask to join the Brotherhood. Yes, I thought you might, given how much time you've spent here. That's not usually a request we agree to. Typically, we take in the young so that they might be trained through adolescence. In special cases, we allow exceptional individuals to conditionally join. Luckily for you, you happen to be exceptional. The condition is that you must complete a task. This task must prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have what it takes to join the Brotherhood. I happen to have something perfectly suitable in mind. Though I warn you, it won't be easy. Still interested? Tell me about the task first before I agree to anything. Is that a waiver of resolve I sense? The Brotherhood is not in the habit of taking on the timid. Okay, Hardin, just tell me about the task. Back when we were stationed at Helios, our scouts reported that a group was establishing itself in the area as a distributor of pre-war weapons. Our elder at the time, Elijah, was too concerned with getting Helios running and fending off the NCR, so he ordered us to leave them alone. It's time that we correct that oversight and show this region that the Brotherhood is still a force to be reckoned with. I want you to visit these weapons dealers, this Van Graaff family, make an example of them, leave no one alive. When the job is done, Report back, and I'll arrange for a team to clean up the site and retrieve the weapons. What? He wants me to wipe out the Van Graaff family? The whole Van Graaff family. As in the energy weapon merchants from Freeside. That Van Graaff family. Look, I realize that the Van Graaffs are crooks and criminals. I, I get it. But it bothers me that the Brotherhood would want to destroy the Van Graaff family, not because the Van Graaffs did anything to them, not because the Van Graaffs are criminals and might deserve it, but simply because they deal in energy weapons, they have technology, they're there, and Hardin wants to make an example of them. That's what this is all about. He wants to use the Van Graaffs as an example to show the Mojave Wasteland that the Brotherhood is a force to be reckoned with again. That is troubling. Now, talking with some of the other soldiers here in Hidden Valley, we learned that they're really glad that the lockdown has been lifted. Hey, so Harden becoming Elder was because of you, huh? Good job! Now that the lockdown is lifted, I may get a chance to get into a real fight. I wonder what it'll be against. Raiders? Rad Scorpions? Death Claws? Oh, I can't wait! At least with the lockdown lifted, I'll be able to resupply my store more often. We find McNamara in the workshop with Lorenzo. Now, he's just Knight McNamara. Ah, Outsider. I've heard that you were instrumental in providing Harden with the evidence to bring against me. And here I had thought to use you. Have you come to gloat? Or did you actually want something? Understandably, he's not too pleased. While heading to Freeside, we find the Van Graaff family at the Silver Rush Casino. If we try to enter, the Van Graaff thug outside tries to take our weapons. I'm afraid I'm going to have to search you before letting you in. The only weapons allowed on the premises are the ones we're selling. But of course, we need them for the task that we are about to do. I tried to kill this guy in a sneaky way. I hid behind a wall, made sure that I was hidden and not detected before I attacked him. But it didn't seem to work. As soon as I killed him, more Van Graaff thugs left the building and attacked me in the streets. Thankfully, we managed to get rid of them fairly easily and heal up. Inside the casino, the Van Graaff family attacks. We find Gloria Van Graaff behind the counter. A few judicious headshots made quick work of her. There were just a few Van Graaff thugs left remaining. Most of them came outside to attack me. Once they were done, we could then take care of Jean-Baptiste Cutting. 
And with that, we wipe out the entire Van Graaff family and end their crime spree. It's also a worthy haul. Look at all of this ammunition and these energy weapons. We find the Van Graaff key on Gloria and Jean-Baptiste's bodies, which we can use to open the safes in their shop. We can also walk away with some pretty decent Van Graaff combat armor. The place is worth looting even upstairs. We find a whole bunch of trunks filled with ammunition and weapons. I can see why Elder Hardin wanted these guys taken care of. It really is a rich target. Back to Hidden Valley, we can report our success to Elder Hardin. Well done. This is a small step in the right direction, but it's damn good to move forward again. Now, I believe congratulations are in order. It is my honor to bestow upon you the title of Paladin of the Brotherhood, for your meritorious service in its name. Normally there'd be a ceremony and such, but everyone is too busy at the moment for such frivolity. I can give you this, however, your very own suit of power armor. We can't spare our best, but I had the knights assemble this one for your use. Which reminds me, you don't even know how to use these, do you? We then get the power armor training perk from Elder Hardin. The screen goes black, and he trains us how to use it. There, I think you got the hang of it now. Should be able to use any type of power armor you come across using what you just learned. Very well, then. In addition to the armor, I've given the order that all of our arms and equipment be made available for your purchase. Finally, while you are now a member of the Brotherhood, I cannot ask any more of you. I'm sure you have goals of your own outside these walls. You are free to come and go as you please, though I hope you'll return to us someday in a more permanent capacity. I wish you the best outside. Brother. So that's what happens if we side with Hardin. Let's reload our previous save and find out what happens if we side with Elder McNamara. Now that we have the three air filtration parts from the vault, we can turn them in to Senior Knight Lorenzo. Good to see you. Alive, that is. Have you found all of the components yet? Really? I mean, that's great. I knew you could do it all along. I'll get right to work installing these. Why don't you go tell the Elder the good news? I'm sure it'll be a huge load off of his shoulders. Heading back downstairs, we can tell McNamara of our success. <sighs> Good news for a change. Your efforts have humbled me, outsider. You have done more than I could expect, even from my brothers. Moreover, I've been going over the scouts' reports and keep coming up with the same conclusion. The NCR is not the threat I've believed it to be. We should not have had to rely on your help in this crisis. I believed my actions were guided by caution and prudence, but I now see the truth. People called me a hero after what happened at Helios, but I left that battle scarred by fear and have allowed that weakness to govern my actions. That ends now. I will undo the wrong I have done my brethren and lift the lockdown. With luck, we will once again flourish. Please, take this. It is a small token of my thanks, and scarcely begins to repay the debt owed you, but is all I am allowed to give an outsider. This key will allow you to use our safe house to the northeast. I hope it will prove useful in your travels. So no matter which elder we side with, they both lift the lockdown. Hardin by ousting McNamara. McNamara by being convinced that the NCR is not as big of a threat as they once were, and by changing his ways. If we go back to Hardin, we no longer have the option to tell him about how McNamara violated the chain that binds. Instead, he's satisfied with McNamara's new direction and no longer wants to usurp his authority. It looks like you've managed to talk some sense into the Elder Outsider. Be assured I'll still be keeping an eye on him. Your efforts to help this chapter are not unappreciated. Let's see if McNamara has anything else for us. Welcome, Outsider. Welcome. The lockdown has been officially lifted, and everyone seems to be in good spirits. With the surface open to us once again, Hardin's already started talk of sending a force out to attack Helios. But I hope to dissuade him. What can I do for you? We can tell him we want to join the Brotherhood. You've certainly earned the right. But I'm afraid there's a slight matter of protocol that must be dealt with first. Exceptional individuals, like yourself, are sometimes allowed to join the Brotherhood if they perform a valuable service for it. While your actions up to this point have been commendable, I am afraid they don't quite qualify as such a service. However, I do have another task that fits the bill rather nicely. Would you consider undertaking it? That depends on the task. Do not hesitate, my friend. Learn from my mistake and go boldly, one way or the other. All right, McNamara, what is it? 
As one of our patrols discovered, the mutants just to the northeast have become strangely violent in the years we were secluded. However, this turn of events could also be an opportunity. We mostly left the equipment of the communications array there alone, out of respect. As the inhabitants have now proven themselves hostile, no more respect will be accorded them, making their equipment fair game. I want you to head up to the summit of Black Mountain and install this remote signal transmitter in one of their consoles. It will allow us to tap into the radar and other detection systems running there, assuming they're still operational. If we're going to operate on the surface again, it would be nice to do so with as much information at our fingertips as possible. Good luck. So instead of being ordered to go and wipe out an entire faction, McNamara sends us to Black Mountain to install a remote signal transmitter. I covered the entire Black Mountain encounter in a recent video. It was a lot of fun, I encourage you to check it out. But at the top of Black Mountain, in one of the broadcast towers, we find a console that connects to the radar. Here we can install the remote signal transmitter and then head back to McNamara to complete the quest. Yes, we've already started receiving telemetry from it. This will be a great help in our future efforts, and I thank you. Now then, it is my great honor to bestow upon you the title of Paladin of the Brotherhood for meritorious service above and beyond the Call of Duty. I'm afraid a formal ceremony was out of the question, given our current state, but I hope this will make up for it. I had the Knights refurbish a suit of our power armor for your use. It's one of the earlier models, but it should serve you well. Now I suppose I'm going to have to show you how to use it, aren't I? And just like with Harden, Elder McNamara can give us the perk Power Armor Training. Think of Power Armor as a machine to be operated, rather than clothing you'd wear. With a little instruction, using it becomes as natural as simple movement. But to the ignorant, it's just so much heavy junk. The screen goes black and we can now wear power armor. With that, we complete the quest and McNamara, like Hardin, gives us a full suit of T-45D power armor. It's different than the one we find on the Brotherhood of Steel Soldier corpses, however. This suit of power armor still has US military insignia on it instead of Brotherhood of Steel insignia. So you can wear this set without appearing like a Brotherhood of Steel soldier. Or we can use it to repair the Brotherhood set that I have on Veronica, which will remove the US insignia. Heading back to Night Torres, we see that we have a greater selection in the shop, and we can then use the key that either McNamara or Hardin gave us to access the Brotherhood of Steel safe house. Inside the safe house, we find the safe house being guarded by Paladin Sato. We can ask him why he is here. I'm here to make sure the bunker stays in one piece. I'm a master at repairing things, so I check in every so often to make sure all the equipment here is in top working condition. If you ever have any gear you need fixed, don't hesitate to ask. Are you always here, Sato? Not always. I have other places I need to be, but I stop by every few days or so. And we can also use him to repair our gear. We then have free reign to loot anything we want from this safe house. We find a minigun, another suit of T-45 power armor, a suit of T-51 power armor, a set of recon armor, both the suit and the helmet, a missile launcher with missiles, a Tesla cannon, and a Gatling laser. These heavy weapons are amazing. I decided not to do a heavy weapons build with this particular character, but looting this safe house makes me almost wish I had. Veronica looks amazing in a T-51 suit of power armor wearing the recon helmet. I think it fits her much better than that strange hooded costume she typically wears. So, now that we know the whole story, now that we've explored every outcome, which is the best decision? Should we keep Elder McNamara or should we replace him with Elder Hardin? Well, this is highly subjective. I don't think there's one good answer and one bad answer. It's not clear cut like that. I think it depends on the goals that you're trying to get out of your game. What role do you want the Brotherhood of Steel to have in your game? I'll tell you where my mind is on this. I'm not impressed with the Brotherhood of Steel I find in Fallout New Vegas. I like how close-knit they are. I like the fact that they're a family, but I don't like how paranoid they are concerning outsiders. I don't like the idea of them trying to hoard technology. I 
I realize that that's kind of their thing. That's what the Brotherhood does. But frankly, I don't trust the Brotherhood to keep dangerous technology away from those who would abuse it. From everything I've heard, Elder Elijah would have likely abused the Archimedes II if he ever got his hands on the Euclid Seafinder. So I'm hesitant to have a strong, vibrant Brotherhood of Steel running around the wasteland. That said, I don't dislike them. I don't think they're bad people. I don't think they're an evil faction. I just worry about them having too much power. Now the men, McNamara and Hardin, are very distinct personalities. Even after we complete all of the quests with McNamara and he becomes more bold, he's still a reserved human being. This is just part of his personality. It's evidenced by the fact that he uses old sayings that he knows very well that advocate a tactical retreat as opposed to doing something hasty and brash. These maxims mean so much to him that he uses them as passwords in messages that he gives out to his soldiers. We heard him say that after he lifted the lockdown, the first thing Hardin wanted to do is go retake Helios 1. Why? For what purpose? They already have the best bunker they could ever want with an amazing defense mechanism. Do they really need to start a new war with the NCR right now? What could they possibly gain? Some unknown weapon that not even Elder Elijah could find at Helios 1? Seems like a really rash thing to do right when you lift a lockdown. And when Elder McNamara sends us to Black Mountain, he says that he initially left Black Mountain alone out of respect for the peaceful super mutants that lived there. He's referring to Marcus. We learned all about Marcus and the peaceful first generation super mutants that were living there when I did my video on Black Mountain. He left them alone out of respect for them. It was only after Tabitha ousted Marcus and started using Black Mountain as a base from which to harass traveling merchants and possibly Brotherhood of Steel patrols that McNamara decided that Black Mountain needed to be dealt with. That said, it's always possible to resolve the Black Mountain episode in a peaceful way. But with Hardin, he sends you to kill the Van Graaff family. There's no peaceful way to solve that. The only way to become a member of the Brotherhood of Steel if you side with Hardin is to kill the entire Van Graaff family. Now, I realize we may end up doing that later in the game, particularly when we get to Cass's storyline. I get that that's coming. But right now, the Van Graffs have done nothing to the Brotherhood of Steel. The only reason Hardin is targeting them is to use them as a show of force to other people in the Mojave Wasteland and to take their technology and that bothers me. So in my opinion, I think the wisest choice for Elder of the Brotherhood of Steel in the Mojave Wasteland is Elder McNamara. I think he has a more rational head on his shoulders. He is a war hero who saved his fellow brothers. He eventually lifted the lock down, realizing the error of his ways, and he's willing to respect his neighbors, even if those neighbors are super mutants. Additionally, later in the game, we may want to make an alliance between the NCR and the Brotherhood of Steel. And if we ever want that, we have to have McNamara as Elder. Hardin will refuse to become allies with the NCR. Only McNamara will allow that possibility. So in my game, I chose to leave McNamara Elder and to keep Hardin Head Paladin. But what did you do in your game? And what were your reasons for the choices you made? I would love to hear your thoughts. I read all of the comments you leave on my videos and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new video six days a week, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next Fallout lore videos, be sure to subscribe and to hit that bell notification button. And did you know that I've got a t-shirt shop? That's right, folks. If you want to get a Fallout or Oxhorn themed shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you'd like to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.